Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Catalyst Mints. All energy, no crash. Check the description for links. What's up, guys? It's Epic STG, and holy shit, we're back again with Observer. And this game was really starting to hit its stride. I was I was expecting it to be good, but I definitely wasn't expecting it to be this good. Stay tuned. I'm telling you, boy, gonna show up in here. Oh my god, he tried to send a D. Uh, 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 I'm about to die email. My dear Annie, by the time you read this, I will no longer be among the living. The details are not important. Just know that I went out on my own terms. I won't ask for a proper burial. God knows that you don't owe me anything. And by the time the cleaners are done with the place, I doubt there will be anything left of me to bury. Just know that, for all my faults, I've always loved you. Just like I loved your mother. With the, when the disease took her, a part of me died that day. Simple displays of affection became a foreign concept, a painful reminder of what I had lost. It does not justify what I've put you through, but it is the truth. I am so happy you've managed to get out of this hellhole and find someone worthy of your love. I wish you both all the best. Love, Dad. Whole lot of father, other figure uh, symbolicism in this. Yo, fellow undesirables. <laughs> Don't believe their lies. The plot, the plague, I'm so funny. The plague is still out there. Fellow undesirables, if you're up to date with the Chiron propaganda, you probably heard the so-called Minister of Health spot out another gem of corporate wisdom. For those who didn't, let me catch you up, let me catch you up to speed. To all those who have given in to the insurgent fear-mongering, I say again, there is absolutely no need for concern. The neophage is no longer a threat. We have contained the glitch and thus freed ourselves from disease. Loyal citizens who support responsible augmentation have nothing to be afraid of. Three words. Bow fucking shit. Let me tell you how things really are. Unless you're one of the lucky class A fucks with a shiny set of mods, in which case you're probably not reading this, the neophage is still very real. We've had at least three confirmed cases in the past year, one of which led to a small-scale outbreak. Luckily, we managed to contain it before it spread beyond control. Now, you might think the three cases ain't nothing to get excited about. If so, I can tell you, you've never been in an outbreak. For those of us who cope with in the Class C districts, even a single instance is one too many. Okay, so what the hell are we supposed to do? First and foremost, it's better to prevent the cure, uh, to prevent than cure. Give the phage recovery. Given the phage recovery rate, these words should be considered gospel. Once the plague hits, it's usually too late. So if you want to stay safe, look out for the symptoms. One fever. Pay attention to anyone with the slightest. I'm assuming that says bumps. Listen, I don't know. I'm assuming it says bumps. Slightest bumps in the body temperature. The phage starts off slow, barely not noticeable than a, uh, than a fly. So if you're feeling a bit under the weather, get your ass to the local clinic and run a scan. Better safe than sorry. Implant irregularities. This is where it gets tricky. Assuming that, like most of us, you can't afford to run the regular mod maintenance, you've probably gotten used to the odd jolt to your neural implant or slight spasm in your artificial arm. However, if these start to occur at an increased rate, you need to check yourself. Erratic behavior. Every once in a while, try to look away from the projector and take a gander at your neighbors. If any of them is acting weirder than usual, babbling to themselves, walking crooked, there might be something afoot. Assuming they're not drunk or high, a bit of civic awareness won't kill you. A lack of it might. Jesus, there's so much to this. I like, I like reading stuff like this because it's fun. It gives you a lot of lore. And then me reading it to you, you're getting a lore. And lore is always good in games like this because we don't know the entire background, we don't know the entire setting. Anyway, juncture inflammation. 
Okay, so the skin, the base of your implant turns red and starts to itch. The bad news is you might be infected. The good news is it's not a death sentence. Our clinics have prefer, uh, performed numerous extraction surgeries, and unlike the corporate cleaners, most of our patients tend to leave the operating room alive. As long as there's no na uh, nanite uh, punctures, it still might not be too late. If there are, you're most likely too busy hallucinating and puking blood to notice. If, if you spot any of these symptoms in yourself or anyone in your neighborhood, contact our clinic, one of our clinics. If you don't know how to find us, ask around. we got eyes and ears all over C districts, and chances are we'll find you. Now, here's what you definitely don't want to do. I fucked that up. It's all right. <laughs> don't panic. Chances are it's still not the phage. We have dozens of false reports of allergic outbreak that turn out to be a nasty case of pigeon flu or an old implant gone haywire. Don't be an idiot. In the last couple of months, we've had dozens of incidents of violence aimed at suspected carriers. Guess what? It doesn't solve anything. Once the disease takes root, we're all in this together. Don't, or do not report it. I can't stress this enough. The cleaners are not your friends. They're not condoning, or they're not coming to help you. Best case scenario, they lock down the entire building and go through it with a fine tooth comb. Use the outbreak as an excuse to confiscate subversive materials or detain any undesirables. Worst case scenario, the ones who don't slaughter outright will end up as guinea pigs for Chiron R&D. If it comes to that, do yourself a favor and pack it in. Jump out a window, blow your brains out, doesn't matter how, just make it last. And we'll, we won't thank you later. You, you won't thank me later, but you'll regret it otherwise. Programs with fire and sword spiders. Oh shit, this is a game! Yo! Y'all yeah. <laughs> have no idea how much I like when games put games in games. I won't play again. Yo! I can't go three. You guys suck. Oh, that was fun. Med view. I don't know what that meant. Move your implant. It's gonna be something terrible when I open this door. Maybe not. Ooh. Oh, this gotta be. Oh! This is where the bull was. He gonna come in here. I know he gonna come in here while I'm in the closed door. I'm 
small, so check your email. Oh, they didn't let him come. Oh, so he's a war vet. This is a war vet. Wait, Mr. Jerkowski. Is that my boy thing? Mr. Dear Mr. Krasny, while we greatly appreciate the exemplary service and sacrifices you made for your country, the VRI policy enforces a strictly proactive stance on helping our brave veterans reintegrate to society. Regular coverage requires a deed of permanent B-class employment per, uh, presented to your representative on an annual basis. Your current genital position simply does not qualify. Given that circumstance, given these circumstances, we must sadly deny your claim and therefore immediately uh, and therefore, and therefore, force to terminate your participation in the program effective immediately. As of today, the Veteran Pension Fund will no longer cover periodic maintenance of your cybernetic prosthesis or prosthetics. We wish you all the best. The Veteran Rehabilitation Initiative is all made you must. Do not respond. All right, enough is enough. All right, this is going long enough. Better or not, I don't give a crap anymore. One more message and I'll find you and beat the fucking junk out of you. My mother can no longer take this shit. She's sick of telling you over and over that her husband, my father, died 18 years ago. She's moved on and we all have. Damn! No one wants to live in the past to constantly relive a tragedy. So for the last time, Mike Jarofsky is dead. He's been dead for a long time. Have someone type that into the busted ass head of yours. I don't care how you do it. Just fucking remember this time. Even if it's a toss up between this and remembering when you take when to take a dump. Because the next message you send will <laughs> send her will earn you a broken fucking jaw. Consider it's your final warning. Damn! Oh man, that's fucked up, son. The wall stands tall. Our brave boys and girls continue to defend us from the eastern hordes. A shot rang out in the dark. Michael, the young soldier next to me, immediately turns toward the wall. The intensity of his gaze sends chills down my spine. Without a second thought, he runs up to the wall, an imposing colossus of concrete and steel. He mounts it in a single leap, using his state-of-the-art leg augmentations. A little gift bestowed upon our troops by the Chiron R&D department. The scout aims his rifle into the inky blackness, his cybernetic eyes scout the horizon for any signs of the enemy. Stern and resolute, the, uh, his comrades hold their breath, waiting for him to say the word. What will be this? Uh, what will it be this time? A soul scavenger? A full-on assault from one of the numerous raiding parties that's scouring this unholy land? When? When he finally speaks, I cannot help but shudder from the sheer intensity of what is transpiring. All quiet. All quiet on the Eastern Front. At least for now. Guarding the wall can be a daunting task. Michael confesses to the, follow uh, confesses the following morning. But it's also a privilege. The other soldiers gather in the cantina and nod their heads in approval. Michael introduces me to his squad members, some of which on their second or third tour of duty. Several firm handshakes later, soldiers regale me with stories of their service, each one of them breathtaking, or each more breathtaking than the last. When I ask what drives then uh, what drives them to such acts of heroism, Michael lowers his head and responds in a slightly embarrassed tone of voice. I don't think anyone here considers themselves a hero. I know I don't. The way we look at it, we're all part of something much greater than ourselves, something that began with our fathers fighting in the big one. Hi, ah, yes, the big one. Such an unassuming name for the greatest conflict of our times. One where we all know the great declination. Is that what that says? Destination? Great destination? Decination? Whatever. To name, uh, a name given not to belittle, but to simplify. A desperate attempt to make sense of the unprecedented tragedy, during which many of the nation's finest gave their all, was to give in defense of, of our way of life, many, or nay, our very existence, from the barbaric hordes of the East. And yet, out of all this culture of conflict, this baptism of fire, we emerged victorious. And while the old world was engulfed in flames, in its ashes we have built our great republic to all the heroes that gave their lives and health in the great destination that's the destination okay we salute you while the soldiers destination is undeniable their service is made much more bearable due to the 
contributions from the Board of Defense and Cairo and Stop Sciences. Michael is quick to agree. If it wasn't for the corporate government, some of us would not have made it this long. Take these babies, for example, he says while affectionately patting his glistening leg prosthetics. Without them, I would be a cripple, wasting away in some hospice, unable to serve my fellow citizens. Thanks to Chiron, my, uh, I can fulfill my role in this great society, spoken like a true patriot. And let us not forget that Chiron takes care of our brave men and women on and off the field of battle. But uh, there are ongoing veteran rehabilitation initiative ensures these soldiers who are no longer able to serve can reintegrate into society so they can lead rich, fulfilling lives once the glory days are behind them. Obviously, Mike Jarowski did not get that. Oh. Oh. This is everybody. So, I don't know where Kharkov is. I think that's the name of the place where we are. It sounds like some Crimean Russian shit. But I could be wrong because they speak in English. But these are definitely some like Soviet bloc names. Robert Budnick, Bogdan Jarowski, Mariam Porzowski, Igor Gromy. Like these are definitely Leon Grabinski. That's my boy, it seems like. Of course. Two agents. Helena Novak, apartment one or and had a nader in apartment 106. Both on the same floor. I could do uh, number three on this one. I got it. to check the tenant register. Authorized personnel only. Well, I was in a hurry, and the door was open. Authorized per, per, per personnel only. Police business. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what you are. Oh, uh, yeah? Back during war, took one alive. Sent for one of you to get into his head. You fought in the big one. Is that why you got all this junk in you? Plasma sweep. Hit our convoy. <clears throat> Borrowed through armor. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring back memories. Yes. Memories. What could you tell me about the tenant in apartment 7? Hey, Joe, what's going on, man? Mm, tenant? Yeah, tenant. 
How long has he been living there? Yeah. Maybe longer. Not good with time. You ever talked to him? Didn't get out much. None of them do. All right, Tin Man. Let me know if it comes back to you. Something triggered the lockdown. Mm. Trying to get it open. Rudy and I. You think it might be the nanophage? You had any recent outbreaks? No. Last one. Long time ago. Down by the river. These are definitely Old some Yuri Cherninkov motherfuckers. This is old Soviet block. It's got this. The implants. Can we lift the lockdown from the inside somehow? Or get a message out? No. Keep people in. Isolate, accommodate, alleviate. Yeah, we all know how that last one used to work. I take it, Rudy's the robot. Multifunction service and maintenance. Drone, don't lose it. What? Mm. Wonders of sometimes. I need to track manually. <laughs> 